Here we have a fresh, killed by the roads. Here's the roads. Gray squirrel, a big one, normal sized. Let me see if I can give it scale. Let's give it scale. Look, there's a big hand. And there's your um, squirrel. Yep, it's dead. Hi everyone, good morning. It's about half past nine on April the 30th, 2013. And the sun is shining, the weather is sweet, yeah. Not for long, this is Manchester after all. You can probably see around me lots of clouds in the blue sky. But um, enough of an introduction. Let's get straight to the meat and potatoes of the video. Um, I want to talk today, about, in this video, about um, non-payment of tax, refusal of taxation, and what that means both for yourself and for society. Um, I'm not going to go into the, the philosophy behind why you should pay tax or not. My heart is already set on no tax. We are all sovereign, free, indig indigenous human beings. And I would like to see the world evolve past centralized government, federal government, big states. I'd like to see it become more um, complicated and, you know, refined and smaller and more intricate, m much as is the state of nature. I want to see things, um, rather than becoming bigger and more super statey, like the EU, the European Union, is desperate to be, I want things to collapse down into Spartan city-states, Athens, Sparta, whatever, because um, it's through diversity and through change that we evolve. And for a great um, explanation as how um, um, Europe seemed to, well, it, it won, it won the civilization war against the rest of the world is because Europe was um, hundreds of little city-states and principalities and queendoms and kingdoms, whereas China, in the same era, was one giant unified empire. And so when the Chinese emperor had a stupid herp-derp idea and said, let's ban ships, all of China went backwards. Whereas in Europe, if the Prince of Holland said, let's ban ships, then the English and the Italians and the you know Spanish would say, well, fuck you, we've got ships, ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, yes, what, what it means for society when you don't pay your tax is that the, the idea, the concept, the ability of a, a large state to operate starts to collapse and uh, new ideas are possible. And uh, the reason why I say I'm not going to go into the philosophy of why you shouldn't pay tax is because we're going to say, who's going to pay for the hospitals and the roads and who's going to operate on you when you have a motorbike accident? Please may I refer you to uh, Stefan Molyneux's um, two excellent free books from his website, Free Domain Radio. There's Everyday Anarchy and Practical Anarchy, which goes into these concepts. But um, I just want to say, you know, like, unlike, well, I'm not going to compare myself, but there's a lot of people on YouTube, on the internet, trying to give you advice about freedom, yet they don't follow their own advice. And um, there are high, no, no, not even any da da da. There's no need for da da da. There's high taxpayers who earn a lot of money and they make sure that they suck the cock of the government. Oh, oh. They get that nice obedience jizz down their throats, but um, not for Charlie Veach. Um, of course, I pay value added tax on um, items one buys in a shop, but in terms of council tax, the kind of flat rate, everyone get fucked tax, council tax, and in terms of income tax, I want to force a confrontation because that is how we evolve. Anyway, three minutes, 33 seconds long. It's always annoying when you get kicked out of a massive government building site, as I just have. Let's see if I can pan behind me to the amazing Moorside campus, Moorside High School. And um, if we have a look at the signs here, they have just been kicked out by the site office and uh, I thought, you know, my mistake was thinking that I could walk up to that no access for pedestrian sign there. But apparently, you're not allowed to be a 1970s flare-wearing Saturday Night Fever kind of guy. So, no Saturday Night Fevering, okay? Anyway, we're here outside the school, and I just want to go to my favorite number. Hold on, let's go to my favorite number. I think, you know, we might as well pentagize. Pentagize, pentagalize, pentagon, pentagram. 5th of August is my birthday, my favorite number. It's five fingers on my hand. Five is half of 10. 10 is the perfect number. We live in a dual world. So five, five, five. 
you know, the transition of Venus around the Sun when looked at it in 3D turns into a pentagram. So the five is important. You know, like I started a, a video movement called uh, Indigene, and then um, I got a response by Thomas, in, uh, who's an artist in, in North America. He might be Canadian, he might be American, I'm not sure. Um, but it's actually pronounced Indigen. Indigen, Indigen, not Indigene. It's not in the gene, it's Indigen. But he was very nice to correct me. You know, without actually correcting me, he just said it himself. And I, shit, I looked that up. And you know, before you actually start a series of videos titled something, you should probably check out how to, um, how to pronounce it first. Can you hear that traffic noise? Anyway, some news to report. Today, this morning, here in Salford, where I live, a prisoner, a private prisoner transport van by a corporation called GEO Amy got raided by five men in uh, masks and balaclavas with shotguns and they freed two um, prisoners. I'm not here to judge whether those prisoners deserve to be free or not, but I do like humanity's will to freedom. I mean, I think there's something very romantic about a prison break or a prison van escape or anyone escaping from anything. Someone escaping from North Korea, someone escaping the public education system. I just want to say, you know, like, I have moved away from conspiracy theory 100%. I think it's 100% bollocks. I think it's a mental illness. I think it's as bad as religion. And yes, very emotionally captivating theories, which is why people fall into such bullshit. And, um, you know, it's a big story when someone goes into it, gets quite, you know, well known and then decides it's a load of shit. And I'd like to thank Alex Miller from Vice Magazine for the article he did. It's not exactly, you know, doesn't make me look good, makes me look like an idiot. But at least he gave it the time to write a big article about it because I think it, it does deserve to be said how, you know, like any, any subculture, any, um, any cult, uh, you, you, you try to leave it. The, the penalty for apostasy is death or your um, reputation destroyed or your family attacked or your house raided or your website hacked or whatever, you know, the penalty for apostasy has to be severe because when you're dealing with an ignorant and ridiculous thought complex such as conspiracy theory, and before a lot of you fall off your chairs and say, but Charlie, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Don't just think that no, no conspiracies exist. Well, for the conspiracies that do exist, it's called the news, Watergate, whatever, you know, whatever conspiracy. I mean, I even got arrested before the royal wedding for conspiracy to cause a public nuisance. That was the charge. And so, conspiracies do exist, but you all know what I mean when I say conspiracy theory, that kind of batshit, crazy, insane, everyone's out to get you, every single public institution is a lie. You know, people aren't as bad as the conspiracy theorists say, and they're not as good as the government says either, or, you know, spiritual people say. You know, fuck the conspiracy world for thinking everyone's pure demonic evil. And fuck the love and light brigades for thinking we're all, you know, infinite love, eh, peace and love, happy days this, happy days that. Which is all bullshit, you know, the truth is, it's both. We're both good and bad, we're both devil and angel, or devil and god. And, um... You can't go around thinking that every single institution set up is a lie just to trick you. And that's what the conspiracy theory world will want you to think. That every single government institution, every school, the school that they're building behind here, it's, oh, it's all hidden. Everyone's hyper-intelligent, demonic fucking Freemasons out to fucking trick you. So, really, what I have to say is that if someone's going to come on the video and rant like I am, it, it should be about something that isn't pathologically insane. It should be something a bit more positive. And I just want to say, this is the quietest spot I could find near my house to film because the workmen are working very hard and making it noisy in my backyard. Anyway, what the fuck was the point of this video? I shouldn't post this shit. I should stop filming now. Yes.